coming back has always been something I wanted to do, but unfortunately this, this show had been non-union. So the sure. fact that this was finally a union show made it easy for me to be like, yes, I want to come back. I need my character to be explained. I need, they need to know what Zach's been doing and where he's at. Thank you so much for joining me. If you would have told 11 year old me that I'd be talking to the two of you, I'd be in shock right now. Um, guys, first of all, 30th anniversary of Power Rangers, once and always, phenomenal. It was excellent. This is everything I wanted from this uh, from this event, for this Netflix event. Um, did you guys ever think that you'd be sitting here talking about a show that uh, had such cultural relevance and was groundbreaking, one of the longest running television series of all time, uh, 30 years later? I don't think at that time, I figured maybe... 10 years later, nobody will be thinking about it. But uh, wow, here we are 30 years later. It's crazy. It is crazy because I'm only 29. So I don't yeah. know how that worked. But I was just going to say, both of you guys look younger than me. And I was watching you guys as a child. So I don't understand what capsule you guys were put in to preserve your, your beautiful selves because you guys look great. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You're way too kind. But uh, hey, uh you know, I, I I personally, there's no way we could have predicted, number one, back in the 90s, how popular the show would come become then. So, you know, it was like we filmed almost the entire first season before it even started airing. So we had no real gauge of what was going to happen. And then once it started airing, it just it took off like fire. And yeah. uh, not only in the United States, but around the world, it became the number one kid show. And uh, here we are 30 years later. It's so crazy, uh, but humbling and obviously neither of us would change it for the world, I don't think. And uh, it's such an honor. And I'm really glad that we got to to film this uh, 30th anniversary special. Uh, I think it uh, brings you guys, the people that were kids, uh, and it brings it into a more adult uh, kind of format. And it, it kind of uh, deals with more real world experiences. And so, um, but it has a little bit of the hints to the old stuff. So I'm super excited for people to see it. And I just hope they really embrace it the way that you're embracing it. Honestly, I feel like this is the perfect blend for a, a longtime fan like myself. But also, we have an eight-year-old now, and she loves Power Rangers just as much. So this is a great kind of generational experience that I would have never thought I would be able to get to experience. So thank you guys for that. Um, look, 30 years ago, uh, you guys were shooting at Kennethon Park, right, right around where I live. And I tried going to find you guys many a times to no avail. <laughs> But can you share any fond memories from when you guys worked together some 30 years ago? We have lots to think of, lots of moments that were amazing. Um, and I, every time I get this question, because we do a lot of Comic Cons and, and we get questions from the fans like this, I always try to find something else that was different because there were so many amazing moments. And um, one of the things that I remember is our first trip out of out of the state. We went to New York to go do a... a, a Press junket. Uh, appearance at FL Schwartz. And I remember us all gathering and sitting to the sitting in the giant rocking chair together and uh and being on the plane and falling asleep. And I think I have pictures of everybody knocked out, which I've never shown, but <laughs> um like like but we took like walks in the snow in Central Park and you know made snowmen and 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 snow angels, and that was just one of those moments that was like out of the show, but together as a family. And and it was amazing. I mean, it was just one of them. That actually is a great memory. I, I do remember that as well. That was like a, a really fun time because for me, that was the first time I ever got to go to, to New York and, and yeah. really experience New York. And so, you know, New York is such an a, amazing city. So to be these young actors on the show and the hype is just starting to build and uh, we got to go to FAO Schwartz. But we also did some press that day. I think we went to a couple of schools and uh, we, I don't know, we did a ribbon cutting ceremony somewhere. I don't know. It was all kinds of craziness. So that, that was cool. But, you know, uh, just hearing you talk about Kenneth Hahn Park, uh, you know, we filmed most of, well, not if not all of the first season in Kenneth Hahn Park. And uh, that was always such a cool uh, experience because people didn't really know what Power Rangers was yet because we hadn't started airing. So, you know, you'd see people kind of trickle in and come like watch and be like, what 
is this? <laughs> there's putties running around and then there's costumed uh, Power Rangers. So, you know, people didn't really understand. I don't even think we as actors understood what the show was at that point, but people didn't really understand what we were doing. But uh, I'm certain there's certain people that were kind of mad because they could have had the opportunity to come up and meet us, uh, but they didn't know what it was. And so they didn't care. But uh, I love that you uh, tried to come and find us. I'm sorry, I tried, you, man. I'm sorry I really, I, I tried hard. We used to go to that park all the time as kids. I only lived, I lived like two miles away from it. So we yeah. were trying to find you guys all the it's time. It's a great park. It's a fantastic, it's a I still go hiking to this day there. So I, I took my kids there recently so they could, I was like, we filmed right here, right around this fountain. I had a fight right here, you know, going back to history. <laughs> Every time we do the hike, I say the same thing. Like, yo, this is, there was a fight, right? I do the same exact thing. <laughs> Um, David, question for you is the last time you were on the show as Power Ranger Zeo, what was it like to portray Billy again? Was it like slipping into a glove and, and, and did, it, did it feel like it just easily uh, to put that character back on? You know, the writers like to do what the writers like to do. And for Billy, that's like, hey, let's give him a lot of words and a lot of big lines that don't really make sense. So, uh, yes, in that sense, it was like putting on a glove. Like, uh, I would be like, what am I talking about again? And so it wasn't always easy as an older person because I start losing my memory a little quicker. But uh, it was a lot of fun to get to portray Billy. Uh, and obviously, just to know that Billy wasn't on Aquatar all these years is is great for me as a character because I just never thought Billy would be doing that. He's more of a space cowboy and, you know, he certainly has been out exploring, but to know that he, he's been back to earth, obviously, and he created Cranston Technologies and within Cranston Technologies, he built this command center and, uh, you know, he's got alpha and all that great stuff. So I, I was really excited to, to get to play my character again. I love that as well. I love that he didn't just stand in Aquatar and he was just traveling around and creating things. I think that's exactly kind of what I wanted from the character, but Walter, uh, last time that you were on the show, uh, was for Forever Red, but you did the voice of uh, one of the Machine Empire, General Garrick, I believe. Yes. Uh, what was it like stepping back into the role of Zack? It was amazing. I mean, you know, Zack obviously is the character that is, uh, that's been renowned for, uh, you know, the beginning of the show. Uh, uh, is the character that was created and, and broke ground as the first Black superhero on live action TV. Uh, the only character will have his own martial art form, so... Uh, it was great to be able to come back to that and let the fans see Zach again and let him know that he was alive and well and and still responsible, uh, I guess working as a congressman, um, you know, still working for the, working to help people in the community. Um, but what I really like is that what Boom Comics did and having, you know, Zach go off and become the Omega Ranger, you know, this right. galactic ranger that's traveling through, you know, the, the, the dimensions to help other rangers. I mean, I think that is definitely something that Zach would want to do. And he's he's a soldier. You know? So um, staying within the grind is, is something I think uh, I would love for fans to see more of. Now, David, you talked uh, about kind of uh, Billy's evolution from uh, where he was to where he's been. Um, is that where you kind of pictured the character uh, where, where we see him in Once, a Ra Once and Always? I mean, in theory, uh, yes, I'm, I, I can see that as Billy. But I mean, I always I always envision Billy more of being like a Captain Kirk, like he's got his own spaceship and he's, you know, a captain and he's out traveling the universe, uh, discovering new um, planets and, you know, aliens and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I think that's what Billy spends most of his time doing. But obviously he there's no reason why he wouldn't be able to come back to Earth and be involved in Cranston Tech and what's going on uh, on planet earth, obviously finding, you know, in once and always, we find out that the original power team has always power Rangers team has always been a power Rangers team. Like they've still always been power Rangers. Uh, so that, I think that's kind of exciting to know, like, uh, you know, anytime there's a call to action, that core six has always been stepping up to the plate. Not only did you guys return, but uh, Jackie Marchan also returned as a story consultant for once and always. Uh, did you guys get a chance to talk to her uh, and collaborate with her at all uh, about the story? I personally didn't get to talk to her, but I feel responsible <laughs> for, for her being uh, involved because, uh, you know, there's there was a lot of discretion, discussion about the scripts. And one of the first scripts we got, I was like, oh, you know, I, I don't know about that. So uh, 
you know, they're like, well, maybe we should bring in one of these writers. And I, you know, they named off these names and I said, Jackie, yes, bring Jackie. So I, I take, I take responsibility uh, for her being involved, but she obviously has longevity with the the franchise and knows it in and out. And so I, I really thought that she would step up to the plate and really help out in a lot of ways. Oh, she absolutely paid off. And, and look, I'm sure that uh, throughout the franchise's history, you guys have been asked back uh, tons of times, uh, was there any hesitation to return for once and always uh, with the initial pitch? And what ultimately uh, had you guys agreeing uh, to come back to this, which was incredible? Coming back has always been something I wanted to do. But unfortunately, this this show had been non-union. So the sure. fact that this was finally a union show made it easy for me to be like, yes, I want to come back. I need my character to be explained. I need They need to know what Zach's been doing and where he's at. So I was really happy with the script and the, and the way that... Um, you know, he took on this this protective role as, as a guardian of uh, of Twee's daughter. So uh, I love that aspect of of Zach's character. You know what? I want to ask about uh, Charlie Charlie Kirsch actually because she is fantastic in this series, awesome. and I think she uh, she does such an incredible job as Min. Um, what did she bring to the role that wasn't necessarily on the page, David? For me, it was interesting to watch her because uh, she really did embody Trini in a lot of ways. Like she. You could really, I could really tell that she went and she researched. She watched all the original episodes and really focused on uh, Trini and Twee as an actress. And um, I just thought it was really neat to watch her sort of take on some of the traits in maybe some ways. And just knowing that Charlie uh, is this amazing martial artist, and we really get to see that uh, in in this special. She really knocks it out of the park, I think, in so many ways as a martial artist, but also as uh, a talented actress. I mean, she was so prepared all the time and um, she really took it serious and she's only 16 years old and um, I'm, I'm really happy for her <laughs> and I'm really proud of her. And uh, you know, I'm sure it might've felt a little weird or intimidating to come work with some guys that are like old enough to be her dads. And uh, you know, we're, you know, what is that like as a 16 year old kid, but she, she did such an amazing job and I couldn't be happier for her. Yeah, and also the way that she played off of the both of you, where she says that she says a line to you, David, and you kind of look away, and and that that like remorse that you that your character has, incredible job. And Walter, so many emotional beats just hit with this. Um, can you talk to me about working with Charlie uh, and getting the emotional uh, tone right for this? Because like you said, this is this is for adults like me, but kids are going to be able to relate to this as well. It's funny because I, you know. You, as an actor, you, you get on set with someone that you don't know and you have to build this relationship. And um, <clears throat> I think right away, we kind of started playing and, you know, toying with each other to try to find this camaraderie. And uh, in the command center, when we had this this speech where I'm talking to her and, uh, you know, I could feel her uh, as a young, as a young woman, you know, she... I have a definitely have a male energy is, is older than her, and I, I wanted to connect with her and make it definitely make her feel like I was a parent. Um, so I, I had one moment where actually we kind of connected heads, and I thought um, that was a moment that was won. Do you know what I mean? That was a moment that was earned, where she felt I knew she felt comfortable with me as this guardian, and that we had that that kind of an affection, like. Okay, you know, I have trust in this moment and in this person and this this character. And that was something we had we didn't have a long time to develop, but I was uh I was happy we were able to get to that. Walter, since we're we're talking about th this series and, and something you made famous was hip hop keto, uh, and you nailed it. It almost it almost felt like you've been doing hip hop keto every single day because it looks so smooth. Uh was that easy for you to like just ease back into? You know what? It it took some planning <laughs> and some rehearsal, but I mean I am I, I I did some training before I went. I was in the gym. I was working my kicks. I was working my my punches, my fluidity. Um, I I can't say that it didn't hurt some, <laughs> you know. But I was I'm capable of doing a lot of things that I was able to do before. I mean, I still got still got skills, you know. So um, right. and I my fluidity is is uncommon. I mean, I guess I've been dancing most of my life, and so. Um, dancing and martial arts kind of fall, fall into the same category and um, going from one move to the next move uh, just kind of comes natural to me. So I was really happy to be able to show that 
I still have, uh, you know, I have a skill set and that I was able to do the stuff I do. And it was, now, it was super, super impressive. Thank oh, you. yeah. Just watching it, I'm telling you, like, goosebumps. Yeah. I got goosebumps watching like, yeah. it. I mean, I'm, I'm a 56-year-old man doing backflips. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, couldn't, I, yeah, wow. I, I couldn't do that. I'd, I'd break a hip at this point. Um, now, look, the, the production on this was phenomenal. The way that they recreated Ernie's Juice Bar was yeah. definitely spot on. David, walking onto that set, did you get a sense of nostalgia and did it feel a little surreal to you? In a lot of ways it did. I mean, it, it in honesty was a little bit smaller than what we worked on before, but just to know that they took the time to build that and to make it look as authentic as possible was pretty awesome. But I have one picture, I haven't really shared it with Walter yet, but I have a picture of Walter in the juice bar kind of hiding around a corner. And uh, it just makes me laugh every time I see it because it really does, when I see that picture, it really brings uh that back to me it, i really feel the nostalgia because it just kind of felt like what what we used to be like when we were you know way back in our 20s so uh, it, was a, it was a really cool set to be a part of that to go back onto that and you know some of the other things that they they did like rita's moon palace and obviously the command center to a degree it was really cool to be on all those sets towards the end of this uh the the, the special i started tearing up because there's a there's a great tribute that happens at the end of this um I just was curious if you guys would be willing to share any stories about Twee and uh, JDF. Simply, um, they were they were phenomenal uh, as Rangers, but they were great people as well. I never had a chance to meet Twee. I always wanted to, but uh, can you share any any stories about them? After I left Rangers, uh, Twee, Austin, and myself, we did um, we did separate videos. They not all of them hit the market, but they, you can find them on YouTube now. But uh, I did a hip hop video for kids, and Austin and Twee came and appeared in my video. So. Um, I was teaching these kids hip hop on the set. Uh, you know, we built the set and we were, I was teaching them hip hop as an instructional video. And Twee came as a friend, as a guest, and she sat with the kids and she did the splits and they cheered for her. And, but I just remember how kind hearted she was and how easy it was to smile when you were around her. Cause she, she made everybody feel warm and, and, and comforted and, and just like, uh, just she had just such a kind spirit. I think for Walter and I and Amy Jo and Austin, it's it's uh, bittersweet that we've lost two of our original cast members, and they both were such amazing people in their own right. Uh, Twee obviously was super sweet, and she had an uh, infectious laugh. And you know, there's so many scenes that I can see in my head when we were filming the original series that just kind of make me laugh. Uh, because of Twee and just the person that she was. And I always tell people I I, uh, I owe Twee a lot because she taught me how to get rid of shine from my forehead. Um, and so that that's always a big thing as an actor. So I, I appreciate that. And obviously with Jason David Frank, um, you know, such a talented martial artist uh, and just, he was one of my best friends. And uh, we had this uh, friendship that was 30 years in the making and, uh, you know, we had our ups and downs as friends do, but, uh, you know, he's always had my heart and uh, uh, just an amazing guy, funny. And, um, you know, I would say the jokester or prankster out of all of us and always the one creating havoc and uh, the one that would probably get other people in trouble when it was really him that did it. So uh, I just, you know, he was a lot of fun. And I, I, you know, I miss them both greatly. I, I really wish Twee uh, could have been with us through all these years to experience the fandom and experience what an impact she has had on so many people's lives. Um, so I'm glad that at the end of the special, uh, they do show that video and it does uh, honor them both. And I, I think it couldn't be more appropriate, uh, a more appropriate way to to honor the two of them. The fact that, you know, the, the script originally was about you know, honoring Twee to then also be able to honor Jason Frank is like such a, a relief because I, I, it's, it's important. It's equally as important to honor him because he had such an impact on this, on the, on the series and uh, was such an amazing motivational person <clears throat> and affected the lives of so many people in a positive way that I, I'm really, I was really happy that we were able to, able to honor them both. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, both of you. Uh, look, the, one of the last questions I have for you guys is I, I love seeing you guys on screen. You guys look great in spandex. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Uh, are you guys done uh, with Billy and Zach's adventures in Power Rangers? I think uh, I think there's a lot more stories to be told. I like that. How about you, David? Yeah, I mean, I hope there's a lot more stories to be told. I mean, the way that this all came about is because I was originally pitching uh, my limited series, Quantum Continuum, to Hasbro. It kind of got stopped uh, because of a legal reason for a little while, but maybe it'll get picked up in, in a few years, but we'll see. But I, I certainly think uh, because our fan base is adults now, and uh, I think they're really going to enjoy this special that they will hopefully want to see more. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can kind of keep showing what this franchise is truly capable of because it's capable of so much. And uh, I just don't feel like it's really been tapped uh, properly. And just with a little bit more guidance from us and finessing, yeah. I think this thing could really be something special. Uh, it's definitely going to happen on. before our 35th anniversary. <laughs> yes. I, actually, I couldn't agree with you. When I actually read uh, the, the, the script you put out on Twitter, the, the Quantum Continuum, the first episode, it was phenomenal. I really loved it. I, I really liked the direction. I feel like the tone you were capturing was kind of like exactly what I what I wanted as well. So I completely agree with you. Um, uh, last question I have for you guys. Simon Bennett was the executive producer on Once and Always. Did you guys get a chance to talk to him and and, and talk to, and collaborate with him at all? And if so, um, what what do you think he brings to the franchise uh, that wasn't there before? Well, I mean, we certainly collaborated collaborated uh, with him and uh, the entire writing team and the production team over there because in a lot of ways uh, they were counting on Walter and I to sort of fill in some gaps uh, yeah. because you know we we were there and so I I would often be like no 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 you can't do that it, it's got to be like this I think they kind of got frustrated with me a few times because I was pretty animate about uh, what we could and could not do uh, like the whole proxy coin thing uh, I really had a really had to say you guys you got to explain this we have to figure out a way to explain why this is happening and so i know that kind of came about and uh you know simon was a good guy he started off obviously as a director of uh you know a few seasons many seasons of power rangers and has stepped into the executive producer role so he he gets it and uh you know he brings he brings where the power ranger franchise is now and we bring where we were back then, and we kind of melded our, our two systems together uh, in the best way possible. And so he was certainly a crucial element and obviously a huge help to all of us for this special. Look, guys, thank you so much for your time. I cannot wait till everyone sees Once and Always. It is phenomenal. Drops April 19th on Netflix. Oh, man, Ranger fandom is going to be eating good. It is a, a great series that pays tribute to the past. And I also think that, you know, it's great for the present. Like I said, this is a generational thing for me. So thank you guys so much for your time. It means the world to me. I really appreciate it. Take we care, man. We appreciate you as well.